Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the Trek Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing Coffee Lake, which of course is an upcoming processor series from Intel, and will represent quite a shift in the company's direction because it will make six core CPUs available for mainstream audiences. So, this is also an article if you want to go ahead and check it out, it is linked as always in the video description. So, let's start this out, shall we? Just to get everyone onto the same page, typically. The average Intel CPU, so for example, the 4770K, the 6700K, you get the idea, offers up to four physical cores and eight and eight threads, thanks to hyper-threading. Now, it's been like that for numerous generations now. And yes, there are processors such as Broadwell E, which of course offers you a great deal more processor cores. The problem is not only are those expensive in terms of the CPU, but also the platform in terms of the motherboard itself is also pretty expensive. And then you also need to add in the cost of quad channel memory, which really bumps up the price. <clears throat> but now Intel are finally starting to see the light and we are going to see Coffee Lake introduced to the mainstream audiences. However, according to a leak, which is thanks to Benchlife, this is not going to happen until some point in 2018, which absolutely sucks. Fortunately, we don't just have this information, we also have um, some information regarding the various SKUs. So, let's start going through this, shall we? Now, I just want to preface this by telling you that Coffee Lake is in of itself very similar to Kaby Lake. It's still going to be utilizing the 14NM FinFET process. And also, we're going to start seeing a very small increase in the performance of Kaby Lake to Coffee Lake. In other words, it's probably going to be a few IPC tweaks here and there. And naturally, there are going to possibly be some clock speed tweaks, although that's not 100% confirmed. So there are multiple different variants of the Coffee Lake SKUs, and if you're unfamiliar with Intel's alpha name suffix, I'm going to go through them. So you have Coffee Lake U, which stands for Ultra Low Power S, which is for the performance slash desktop parts. We can pretty much have the safe assumption that it's going to be an unlocked part, which is naturally denoted with K. Coffee Lake X, which is extreme, and finally Coffee Lake H which is for mobile with high performance graphics. So in other words, that would be for, you know, two in one PCs, that type of thing. Now we've got that out of the way and we're all on the same page. This is where things start to become a little bit complex. And this is also where I've done it as an article because there are so many different um, well, names of processors and stuff. So. Skylake X and Kaby Lake X are going to be launching in the second quarter of 2017 along with another motherboard, because of course, with another but socket type, because of course, and this is going to be in the shape of LGA 2066. Now you may say to yourself, well gee, Coffee Lake, you know, is great, but what's the difference between Skylake X and Kaby Lake X? You may say to yourself, well, logically, Kaby Lake X is going to be better than Sky Lake X, right? It's a generation after. Yeah, there's where it gets a bit confuzzling. So, Sky Lake X actually features 10 physical processor cores. Naturally, these will include hyper threading, so 20 total threads. Whereas, Kaby Lake X has just 4 cores, and naturally, that means 8 threads. Now, that's quite the price difference. So what Intel are going to do is release Coffee Lake. Now Coffee Lake is going to be, I guess, the intermediary between the two. It's going to be listed as a 6 plus 2 part, just for clarification's sake. The 6 denotes the fact it has 6 processor cores, whereas 2 means it's going to feature the G2, the GT2, excuse me, I'll repeat that one more time, G T2 graphics core from Intel. Now, that processor is also going to be on LGA 2066, and once again, it's going to act as like a halfway house between the standard 4 core and up to 10 processor cores. But I guess most folks are not going to be so much interested in the extremes, they're going to be more interested in the mainstream. After all, that's where Intel are going to face a lot of competition from Zen, which we'll go into in a moment. So what about the mainstream? 
Well, that's going to be covered by Coffee Lake S. Now, once again, we're going to see two variants of this. The first is a four core. We're unsure if there's going to be a two core. It's possible, I guess. As well as a six core offering. Both of these, once again, will come with a GT2 graphics. And for all intents and purposes, it's going to basically be KB Lake with slight tweaks, which is fair enough. It's fine. You know, nothing, nothing wrong there. Coffee Lake does have a few extra um, changes here and there, which we do know about. For example, we have um, memory running at 2400 megahertz, although it is only dual channel in this case. Uh, once again, for the mainstream desktop. And another nice addition from what we're hearing is additional PCIe 3.016 times lanes. In other words, these are the fast PCIe slots on your motherboard, which naturally are generally going to be taken up with high performance graphics solutions, for example, high end graphics cards like the, you know, the high end Titans or whatever you're going to put in it, and also SSDs. Although you could also go with M.2 as well, which Intel, of course, are going to be pushing and certainly will be pushing even harder over the next year or so. Now, there is also going to be a six processor core mobile configuration, and that is once again covered with. Coffee Lake H. Because it is a high end graphics solution, a high end mobile solution, it will come with high performance graphics. So, once again, GT2. Now, I think it's fair to say that there is going to have to be a bit of a compromise because, logically speaking, because it's still going to be built on the same process node and because the actual die sizes are the same. We can't expect the processor to be running at the same clock speed because battery life would be about three seconds. So therefore, there's probably going to be some concession and perhaps it could be like running at a third of the speed or half the speed or whatever. Now, I know what you're going to say, well, okay, what does all of that mean? And unfortunately, it's a bit of a complex situation if you're thinking of upgrading right now. I could probably put together an entire theory on the best time to upgrade your PC um, based upon every month and every generation it's it's a bit of an art form and this is perhaps the worst time possible to do an upgrade especially if you're spending a lot of money now once again because Coffee Lake is not going to be released until the mainstream until 2018 it's less of a big deal but it becomes really confusing for the average customer because of Zen and also KB Lake. If you happen to have a Haswell processor or possibly Skylake, well, really, if you're looking for a processor upgrade, let's say you've got a low, a low end Skylake or you have a Haswell, but you think to yourself, gee, it's running a bit slow now, it's a bit long in the tooth, or even a prior one, for example, Sandy Bridge or something like that, and you're thinking for a processor upgrade. It's very hard to argue with Summit Ridge, also known as Zen for the desktop. Obviously, at the end of the day, we don't 100% know that the rumors that we're hearing are accurate. And I actually had this discussion with someone, a couple of viewers actually on Facebook. And the reason I love the fact that we're getting a lot of Zen rumors, which are very similar to one another, tells me that, and bear in mind, a lot of the sources and images and so on are actually noticeably different. The reason I love that is because it tells me that the accuracy of those rumors is higher. Because if you have a whole bunch of rumors and each one is different, then you've got to pin the tail on the donkey while wearing a blindfold. Which one's right? You don't know. And as we all know from the early uh, NX rumors, which of course is now the Switch, there were so many competing rumors, so many competing theories of how powerful the console was going to be. What was going to be the um, internal chipset? Was it going to be Polaris based? Was it going to be Nvidia based? Was it going to be something entirely different? You know, did it happen to run in the cloud? Is it going to be portable only? Is there going to be two different variants of the system? Is one, is one going to be only for the home? One only going to be for the um, mobile? But of course, now we actually come to the truth. What I love about the Zen rumors is that they are becoming pretty accurate. Now, the latest ones I've heard, and once again, this is linked in the video description uh, and also within the article that I um, linked also the first article in the video description. Hopefully that made sense. Anyway, 
Um, Summit Ridge is already competing roughly along the lines of 6850k or higher. And that's impressive given that Summit Ridge is going to be about the 300 US dollar mark for the high end processors if the if the rumors are accurate. Now, that means theoretically for the mainstream, Intel might well have the clock speed advantage over Zen, but in terms of actual bang for buck, in terms of cores, if you're doing things which have the, u have the use of multiple processor cores, which I think we can all agree now, games are starting to slowly become DirectX 12 normal, and and uh, Vulcan, and on top of that, we're only presuming your only game. If you do other things as well, for example, video encoding, run virtual machines, do a lot of image processing, audio editing, 3D rendering, programming, you get the idea by now. More processor cores equals good. So it's hard to argue that Zen is going to be really tantalizing for those individuals. The interesting part for me is going to be this if amd can nail intel for kb lake that means once again theoretically it's going to be a shootout between coffee lake which is one of the reasons i'm so interested in coffee lake for the mainstream versus zen and whether amd can either counter with a zen plus which is the t you know tentative name it's basically zen but with IPC improvements. So basically a bit like how we've got Skylake to, you know, uh, KB Lake, it's going to be very similar. What they managed to do, I'm guessing it's going to be improvements to clock speed, improvements to IPC, and a few other uh, bits and bobs along the way. But it's going to be kind of cool. Personally, I would love to see the age of AMD for a bit, because I think it's going to be good for the marketplace to have a bit of a shake-up. And it's going to be nice to not just have to, you know, rely on one processor manufacturer for the high end. So personally, I would like to see that. And then I would like to see Intel hit back with uh, Coffee Lake and then AMD to once again hit back with Zen Plus and then for a bit of a, a bit of fisticuffs. But either way, I'm very interested in, um, well, the next generation of processors. So with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of a short thing. I've been really busy with personal stuff over the past couple of days so i can only profusely apologize however the ps4 pro video is well underway and i'm also working on a few other videos including a scorpio video um, which is a bit of an update slash roundup and a few other bits as well so hopefully you'll stick with us normal things if you've enjoyed the video you know subscribe share send it to your friends buddies and cohorts but for now i'm gonna let you all go so take care of yourselves bye for now